And then material structures can be shaken. Structures like this church building in which we're meeting. I'll read you just a couple of passages from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 2. Beginning at verse 12. Now as I read some of these passages where God is speaking about things that are being shaken, I suggest that you make a little mental register of what is the one thing that God hates the most. The one thing that ultimately will always bring disaster. I don't want to tell you the answer. I just want you to follow with me and see if you can pick out what I believe is the one salient feature. In Isaiah chapter 2, beginning at verse 12. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall come upon everything proud and lofty, lofty, upon everything lifted up, and it shall be brought low. Upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, <coughs> and upon all the oaks of Bashan, upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, upon every high tower and upon every fortified wall, upon all the ships of Tarshish and upon all the beautiful sloops. <coughs> the loftiness of man shall be bowed down and the haughtiness of men shall be brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. And just one verse from Isaiah chapter 30. There will be on every high mountain and on every high hill rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. And every time I walk through a major city such as this and I look at all the skyscrapers and all these tremendously tall buildings and I ask myself what will it be like in the day when the towers fall? I always think particularly of the ones that have glass walls. And it's hard to imagine the kind of scene that would confront us if all of them collapsed. But the Bible says they will all fall. You may feel uncertain about that. Let me say for my part, I believe it will happen exactly the way it says. And then the whole earth will be shaken. In Revelation chapter 6. <clears throat> this is part of the unfolding of the prophetic vision of Revelation. Beginning at verse 12. And I looked when he opened the sixth seal. And behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. I don't think our minds can fully conceive what will happen when every mountain and every island, including the British Isles, will be shaken. And finally, in this list, the heavenly bodies will be shaken. And you remember that the Lord said, I will shake not only earth, but also the heaven. In Matthew 24, verse 29, this is part of the prophetic discourse of Jesus on the Mount of Olives, leading up to his return. Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. 
the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. I don't believe any of us fully understand, but apparently everything that we associate with the heavens will be shaken, which is exactly what God said in Haggai. I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. And the writer of Hebrews says, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Why? Because God wants to reveal and demonstrate a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And one way to prove it is to let everything that can be shaken be shaken. And the writer of Hebrews says, we have such a kingdom. We have something that cannot be shaken. But it's not in any of the things that I've listed. So you need to ask yourself and I need to ask myself, where is my kingdom? What is my kingdom? What am I putting my trust in that cannot be shaken? 